Welcome everyone to our online Eucharist this morning. I hope that you feel fully part of this worshipping community as we gather to worship on this first Sunday after Trinity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Our prayers of penitence. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Let's take a moment of quiet to review our own lives and bring them before God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And a collect for today, the first Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because, through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now have our first two readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. 
Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken we will do. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. And the Gospel for today. Alleluia, Alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. So words from Matthew chapter 9 and chapter 10. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the Cananean and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, Raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts. No bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff. For labourers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, Find out who in, who in it is worthy 
and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is, if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I'm sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother unto death, and a father his child, and children will rise against their parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today's Gospel reading is a long one and covers all sorts of things. Where do we start? Do we start with the recognition that Jesus warns his disciples not about outsiders, but insiders? The wolves aren't the Gentiles or the Samaritans or anyone external. They're the synagogue leaders, the council elders, the magistrates, the political officials that will threaten the mission of the disciples. Israel's problems are with Israel. Or do we start with the fact that Matthew says their names? Twelve apostles about whom we know next to nothing. Twelve among admittedly far, far more who bore witness to Jesus. Yet we remember them because Matthew says their names. Names have great power. One of the most chilling aspects of the Holocaust was that people were reduced to numbers. Names are powerful and mark people out. Until a couple of weeks ago, no one had heard of George Floyd, the black man so shamefully killed by a police officer, whilst people looked on, unable to help. It was very shocking and has resulted in protests around the world. No one had heard of George Floyd, but now saying his name in some way keeps his memory before us and makes us call for and long for change. Or we could start by observing that those to whom Jesus entrusts his mission, the apostles, those sent as emissaries, agents of Jesus, were a rather strange bunch. Peter will deny him. Judas will betray him. And Thomas, good old Thomas, will struggle to believe in him at all. Nor were they of one mind. Although they were all Israelites, they still boasted a remarkable range of different perspectives and political commitments. Matthew is a tax collector working with the Romans, while Simon the Cananean is a zealot planning their overthrow and so on. Yet to this motley bunch, Jesus gives tremendous authority and responsibility, sending them out to do all the things he has been doing. Not an easy task at all. Or we could start with the crowds, hungry and sick, harassed and helpless. Matthew doesn't tell us that in the face of their overwhelming need, distress and demands, Jesus implored the disciples to clear the square, 
called for crowd control or scuttled off to safety. No, Matthew writes simply and tellingly, he had compassion for them. Or do we start with what? There is so much we might say, so much we can say, so much that needs to be said, where to actually start. Well, I'm not sure it matters too much. What I do think is that we need to look at our own identity. Who are we in Jesus Christ? He knows us by name, not by number. We are Christians, people who follow a name, Jesus Christ. Someone we can know, someone we can follow. And we need to live and grow into that identity. We do that by directing our gaze inward toward reflection, lament and accountability, which is much better than outwardly in blame, which is what people so often do. Perhaps it's naming the names to honour those unjustly killed, making sure that we are not unwittingly or even consciously racist in our language and our actions. That is not always easy as we absorb our background culture and education, our country's history and so on. We all of us will differ on all sorts of issues and bring different experiences and perspectives to bear. And yet God entrusts us to proclaim the good news in word, but also in deed, probably mainly in deed, cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. We may well not be able to do this in the dramatic ways that Jesus did, but we can all help support others, offer comfort to those who are bereaved or with incurable illnesses and so on. The list is endless when you start to think about it. Put simply, we need to follow Jesus' example to look beyond actions to the need, to see the pain and the hurt and the unheard laments, to view those around us not with fear, but with compassion. And if all that seems too hard, and it isn't easy, there is also good news. As Jesus said to his disciples then, so also he says to us today, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Now that isn't a license to say whatever we want, justifying it as the spirit's words, of course not. It's the promise that the living spirit of Christ will continue to work in us and through us. And there's more good news as well. As Paul writes in Romans, because of God's act of sacrificial love in Christ, we know that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Hope does not disappoint. Times are not easy at the moment for us and for many in the world. There is still much injustice in this world, way, way too much. There is much suffering. Many are worried about what the future may hold, about how people will meet up again, will they still have a job, and so many other questions. The world is changed, perhaps forever. We may, may never go back to how things were before. We will have to see. But the harvest is still plentiful and the labourers are still few. You and I have the gifts, the insight and I hope the passion necessary to begin. So let's just start in any way we can, even if it is very small, and do what we can to follow Jesus. And blessings on all our journeys, wherever they may lead. The Creed. We believe in God the Father, God Almighty by whose plan earth and heaven sprang to being, all created things began. 
We believe in Christ the Saviour, Son of God in human frame, Virgin born, the child of Mary, upon whom the Spirit came. Christ, who on the cross forsaken, like a lamb to slaughter led, suffered under Pontius Pilate, he descended to the dead. We believe in Jesus risen, heaven's king to rule and reign, to the Father's side ascended, till as judge he comes again. We believe in God the Spirit, in one church below above, saints of God in one communion, one in holiness and love. So by faith, our sins forgiven, Christ our Saviour, Lord and Friend, we shall rise with him in glory to the life that knows no end. Our prayers of intercession. Let us pray for the church entrusted to the disciples and the world into which they were sent. As Jesus called the twelve to be disciples, make all members of the church faithful followers in the way that he taught. Lord, your world is living through a difficult time, a time of much uncertainty. Will our lives ever go back to the way they were? Will we ever develop a vaccine against the coronavirus? Will we manage to combat global warming? Such uncertainty brings with it great anxiety. At this time, we are in need of hope and love. So we pray that you might strengthen the hope and love that belongs to all Christian people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the leaders of this world and their advisers, whether political or scientific, through these uncertain times, that they may make the best decisions for those they lead, and indeed for the whole world. The death of George Floyd triggered much unrest in America over the treatment of black people by the police. Some people in our country supported these views with public demonstrations, stating how black lives matter. Originally peaceful, these rallies were turned to violence by a minority of protesters. May we, as Christians, categorically state that we neither condone racism nor violence. By the Holy Spirit, Bring the radiance of your love into the hearts of all who do not know you and make the gospel known to those who wander like lost sheep in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open our eyes to recognise the needs of those around us. Help us to help each other in any way we can. And we pray for those who are unable to work and are struggling to pay their bills. We pray that our children's education will not suffer through this pandemic and that their schooling will soon resume. We give thanks to all the teachers who are putting in so much effort to continue lessons online. As we go on our way, Fill us with the desire to speak the good news of the Kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Relieve and comfort those who suffer from any kind of sickness. We pray for all those who work in the National Health Service, doctors, nurses, cleaners, porters, administrators, and anyone working in the healing of the sick. We pray too for those who work in the emergency services 
and for those who live or work in care homes. Keep them and their families safe and healthy. Let us pray for those known to us and are in need of help or comfort. Here, in our own community, we pray by name for Avril, Claire, Matthew, Steve and Debbie Plowright, Maureen and Colin Stock, Susanna Fletcher, Jude, Michael Arnold, Maz, Chloe, Mandy Parker, Ken Randall, Vernon, Joe, May and family, Peter Sharrott, Neil Sims and family, John and Jill Neil, Margaret Clayton, Doreen Rendell, Toby, Daphne, Lorraine Perdue, Christine, Georgina, Adrian Young, Bill Mavel, Patricia, Peter's mum, Becky, Braden, Charlotte Dunnell, Kate White and Anne Ram. Empower those who care for them and give new hope to those who have lost hope through the distress of body or mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the living receive your divine compassion in their suffering, grant mercy to those who have died and gather them into your eternal kingdom. We pray for those who are dying, not only from COVID-19, but as a consequence of it, through cancelled operations or other forms of medical treatment for illnesses such as cancer, stroke and heart disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Call to labour for the Lord. We pray that all we do and say may be truly in his name. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And so we imagine those around us who would normally be physically present with us and also those who are watching this online and we give thanks for them and we offer them God's peace. a prayer at the preparation of the table. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice we offer for the praise and glory of his name, for our good 
and the good of all his church. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, with songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ given for us all. The blood of Christ shed for us all. And a post communion prayer for today. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, now and always. Amen. That's the end of our online service this week. We'll be here at the same time next Sunday. If you want to get in touch, please do so. I would always be very happy to hear from you. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>